Hello guys, we're going to be going over the MLB prize pick slate for Saturday, July 23rd. Got a lot of games again today. We have a doubleheader in the Guardians and White Sox. Starting off with first inning run props, there is one that stood out. Uh, Reds and Cardinals. Taking the over on this one, it is going to be Steven Matz against Mike Miner. Two lefties, you can see it, six CRAs. But Matz, he has been better than that number indicates, 3.91 expected ERA. But the thing is, he's coming back from injury, and usually when that's the case, guys are just going to be rusty. He's missed two months, and I would he's going to be on a limit for sure. But that doesn't really factor into this one because it is a only a first inning run prop. So I like the chances of the Reds scoring on Mats, but it's really about the Cardinals. I think they will be able to score off of Minor. Of course, with first inning run props, if I'm taking it over, I'm going to have a lot of interest in the hits. I do believe that when there is a hits prop, I will always take the 1.5 hits over the 0.5 runs. I just think that that's so much better because, you know, let's say they don't score, but each of these teams kind of hit. That one's going to win then the runs they don't score. So I just feel like the hits, anytime you want to take a over on the runs, if a hits is available, 1.5, take that one instead. So if we do get it, that will become uh, probably a tier one play for me. This one I like... Um, a good amount. I would say like tier two for right now. The next one, this is my favorite play of the day for right now. Zach Wheeler over six strikeouts. This is going to get bumped. I wouldn't be surprised if it actually moved the full strikeout higher. The Cubs just strike out. And Zach Wheeler is a very good pitcher. He definitely gets strikeouts. And at six, I mean... I, in my opinion, I think this is a mistake. They probably should have set it at 7. If they bump it, it probably goes to 6.5 first. I'm not going to play it, but I don't like hate it if you wanted to because I think you could definitely get the 7 against this Cubs team. Wheeler going to be pitching at home. The The Cubs, they do play worse when they're on the road, so that, of course, helps Wheeler's case there. But, yeah, this is going to be a lock for me at 6. I think you could absolutely at least get to 6. The next play is going to be Brandon Woodruff at 6.5. And this will be an over as well. The Rockies, they don't strike out a ton. But their offense is always just so much worse when they're on the road. This game is going to be in Milwaukee. Uh, the Rockies, they do strike out a lot more when it comes to facing off against a righty than a lefty. And this Brewers team, they had to play... Uh, a, I mean, both of these teams. They had to play a 13-inning game on Friday. And... Milwaukee used a ton of bullpen arms, so that might allow Woodruff to go maybe like a batter or two or an inning even more than usual. We could see in top over 100 pitches. I still like the strikeouts though more than the pitches thrown because what if he's efficient? That hasn't really been the case so far, but his pitches line is set at 96.5 and you know for a guy that has ace stuff, he really doesn't go over that a lot. So that's why I'm sticking with the strikeouts for the over here. He's just an elite strikeout pitcher. So, like the over here probably is going to move to 7. So, if it does, not going to take it. Next one is going to be an under. Anibal Sanchez at 4.5. I can pull up his numbers here. He missed the entire season. Uh, I think it was last year. So, we don't have data for him. Yeah, last season. And his strikeout rate, it's 17.6 the last time we saw him. 26.3, but... Remember, he's made only one start, so like that's not what his strikeout rate is going to be. And that last matchup, it was against the Braves, a very high strikeout team. Now he gets a matchup against the Diamondbacks. They're not like a great offensive team, but when it does come to strikeouts, you look at them, and I'm going to adjust the dates just because the Diamondbacks, their lineup has really changed. For most of these teams, it really has. So I wouldn't say that if you want to pull up the full season, that's really the best estimate now. So let's just put it at June 1st, just kind of like a, a, it's a random data, I think, is enough for the sample size. So if we look at this, uh, let's filter home as well as Arizona will be playing at home. For their K rate, they're 19.6, which is 24th. That's really low. Yeah, their WRC plus is not good, but all we care about right now is strikeouts. So that's why I think the under is good. You have a sub-20% K rate pitcher against the lineup that K is sub-20% as well. So I think this one could definitely move to four. 
the Diamondbacks, they can platoon a lot of guys, but they really do have a lot of left-handed batters. So that's why this is going to favor them. They will strike out less just because they will have at least a lefty-ready matchup. Like, they have a ton of these guys. David Peralta, um, Alec Thomas, just so many. <laughs> so I think the under is the play here. And Kyle Wright, over 5.5. It's the Angels. The Angels steal down Mike Trout. Even if Trout was in, like, it's a strikeout prop. Trout is striking out at a pretty high rate. And this Angels lineup, I mean, away, they're even worse. Pulling the Ks up. They're first by a wide margin. 30.3. The Angels, they're just really bad right now. And it's basically just Otani trying his best to carry. But, you know, he can't do it himself. This Angels lineup, they're... Striking out a ton, as you can see, and then Kyle Wright, he really isn't the best strikeout pitcher if you pull up his numbers, but he has improved his percentage this season, so that's a pretty good thing to see. He's up to 23.9, very, actually a substantial improvement this season, so I think you have a guy pitching at home, young pitcher, and then you have the Angels who just struggle at, uh, away, so that's why I'm going with the over at 5.5. And then I have a pitches thrown prop. Did really well with these on Friday. I only have one today, but it is Johnny Cueto. 102.5. Taking the under on underdog. It is at 100.5. So I like the extra two pitches here. Taking the under here. He, I think it was a 103 last start, but he begged. And it literally in the article, it said he begged his manager, Tony La Russa, to let him go out there again. And La Russa said that if you let any base runner on, we're taking you out. And he was able to get through that inning. So he, that's why he finished with 118. But if, I mean, I don't want to say just take that 118 out, but is, you know, are the White Sox really going to let Cueto throw that much again when it's only July? Like, this White Sox team, they definitely, but Cueto's pitched well enough to really stick around and be probably a key piece on this team. Like, he's definitely not the same guy that he was years ago, but this pitch count, it just feels really high. And, I feel like you. I don't think he's going to be begging his manager again. And so if we see Cueto really end an inning off, like between 90 to 102, I don't think he's going to come back in. So that's a pretty wide margin, and I feel pretty comfortable about it. I'm going to put him as a Tier 2 play right now. There's another way that he can get there, injury, you know, unfortunate way, but that's how unders can hit. And then also just poor performance. Like the Guardians, they... They're not a bad offensive team. They have some good bats. They have, like, Nolan Jones has probably, like, been called up. Um, Jimenez, all-star, starter even. So they have other really solid pieces. I would say the one thing is, though, this is a double header. So maybe you're going to see the White Sox just like Quito pitch a little bit more. Or also the Guardians, they could run a weaker lineup out there, which can obviously make things easier for Quito. So that's why it's not going to be a Tier 1, but... I would say this still looks pretty good to me. Just think that this count is too high, really. It's too much of a recency bias line, I would say, in my opinion. And again with this game, we have Miles Straw. Like, really weird how we see him back on the board. It's been Stephen Kwan, but for whatever reason, he's available for game one, and he's been the nine-hole hitter. So we're getting a guy who, I mean... You really don't see ninth bat, guys that bat ninth as a hitter line here. And this really is a line that he should be set when he's batting first. So I really like it. He's a threat to steal. But Johnny Cueto, he's done a good job limiting base runners, base stealers in the past throughout his career. So I like the idea of him not being able to steal. And they also do have Grandal back in the lineup. Now, doubleheader, so we don't know if he's going to be catching. But Straw, like... He's really not a good hitter. His batting average has really plummeted. That's why he's been moved out of the leadoff spot. That's why Stephen Kwan's in there. So, I mean, I hope Kwan plays so we don't see, like, Straw back in the leadoff spot. But as long as Straw is batting ninth, I do like this underplay. You're pretty much betting on him to hopefully get a stolen base. And, I mean, that's not something that I really like. Hitting, like, hitter-wise, he's just really not a good hitter. So, I like the under. And a total basis play, this one, if it was in Yankee Stadium, yeah, tier one, but it's in Baltimore. Judge, I mean, this is someone that it just doesn't matter what the ballpark is. He has that kind of massive power. He had two on uh, Friday. Jordan Lyles, 
this guy gives up a ton of power. He's not good. And Judge, he hits Lyle's pitches really well. Slider, fastball. The reason why it's not a tier one play is, again, just the stadium. Baltimore moving those fences back in left field, really hurting right-handed power. So that's the reason for this. But, I mean, it's still Judge. So that's why I am still have him as a play. And then hits and walks. There are two. Nick Castellanos, under 1.5 hits and walks. Take down Marcus Stroman. Stroman really doesn't walk many guys. And one of Stroman's best or most used pitches is this slider, which Castellanos, he's really having a bad year. He's just, he's not performing anywhere close to where he's been. Stroman, he has a very low walk, walk rate. And for the slider, again, Castellanos really struggles. Minus 8 run value this season, but throughout his career, it's always been really bad for him against the slider. So that's the reason for this. And um, you got Zach Wheeler on the other side. So I would think, you know, Phillies probably only get to play 8 innings, bad 8 innings. That's another way that hurts the offense here. So I do like the under Castellanos himself. He doesn't walk um, a whole lot. Like it's a 5.8 walk percent uh, walk rate. So. I like the under there. And then another one's going to be Joey Wendell, also an under. Taking on Jose Quintana. Quintana, he's not... Okay, Jose Quintana, um, not really someone that walks a ton of guys. Like, he could... He usually hovers around one or two walks a game. But he is going to be pitching at home. So that's going to make things tougher for uh, Marlins offense. Pittsburgh, not a good uh, hitter's ballpark. Quintana, as you can see, walks just... You know, you see a lot of ones, a lot of twos in there. But Wendell, the thing with him is he's a lefty. Obviously not as good when he's facing off a lefty pitcher. But he could be a DNP. Not sure about that, though, because they do have Birdie, Jazz Chisholm injured. So he could still be in the lineup. And if he is also batting lower in the lineup, this looks pretty good. Uh, walk rate only 6.4%. So that is going to be an underplay for me, but... If you're going to play this now without knowing the lineup, just know that it could be a DNP. For a personal play, Ben Benintendi over against Luis Patino. Don't know how long Patino is going to throw, but Ben Benintendi does hit his pitch as well. And walks, it's also a good spot for him. Um, just the pitcher and the hitter both ways. So I like Benny here. And then for the stolen base targets, Anibal Sanchez, Lance Lynn, Logan Gilbert, Bumgarner, Steven Matz, Jordan Lyles, James Caprillion, Garrett Cole, Taylor Hearn, Michael Pineda, and Kyle Wright. As far as the tiers, I'm going to post this on my Twitter. Link will be in the description if you don't already follow me over there. But it's Wheeler and Woodruff as the tier one. Wheeler by far stands out over six. So that's going to be my favorite play. Also going to be writing an article. Those They're totally free once again. Going to be on DFS Army. I will post the link to it pinned into the comment section down below in the video when I do get done with it. Expect to be done within the next two hours so thank you guys for watching good luck on this slate you know it's the weekend it's saturday so hopefully we do continue our winning ways thank you guys for watching once again good luck on the slate and i'll see you in the next video bye